Hey everybody, it's Angelo with Angelo's Workbench. Welcome back to video number two in the Hasegawa Mitsubishi Galant VR4 video series. I'm having a lot of fun building this car. Let's jump right in. Okay, so we are at it here with the chassis. Working on the chassis. Um, I have begun assembly of it. I've done some very fine detail painting. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but there are some slight variations in shade on these parts, steel, aluminum, silver. Um, I've done the details on the CV boots here and here. Um, there are also, if you look very closely at the bolt heads, they are done in titanium gold. The oil pan on the motor I've done black. Uh, that's actually the same piece, these guys. So some intricate masking there and some airbrushing, but um, that's ready to go. So the um, exhaust is ready to go on. This has to get attached. This is actually three or four different colors. Um, you can see the black, the silver, the aluminum, the titanium, um, and then the tips are done with the black in the centers. Um, the interior is ready to go, has been assembled. There is the interior. Really, the only thing there is is the decals. Um, everything else, and even the real car, is just a sea of black. Um, except for on the dash, there is a gold emblem that tells what number the car is, because the car is numbered. There were only so many made. Um, you can see here I have mixed the color, what I think is a very good approximation of the color. This is my test shot. Um, the paint has been applied to the car, as well as clear coat. As you can see, here's the spoiler. And uh, and I have the wheels here, which are ready for detailing. The clear was just shot this morning. So it is fully, it is cured clear coat to the touch, but uh, not to where I want to mess with it yet. I usually like to let this go off for 24 hours before I start messing with it. But the wheels are done in body color, as are the uh, the real deal is in body color. I have to look close up at the wheels and see if the inside of the Mitsubishi logos are red on the wheels or not. I have to look at that. Uh, look at my photo, uh, my reference photos. The outer edge is silver. I'll be doing that. Um, and then those wheels will be good to go in these beautiful Pirelli tires, which are nice. I like these Pirelli tires. Um, Hasegawa, Fujimi, all those guys, they always have the best wheels and tires. Fantastic. Um, and the body is also... Uh, let me see here. I'll adjust my camera first. Angle you up a little. There we go. Um, the body is also ready to go. The uh, clear coat has um, it's cured for the most part. Again, I just shot it this morning. Um, I like to let it uh, go off for 24 hours before I really mess with it. But there is the uh, there is the body. And, and then once this is um, fully cured, I can uh, mask off and do... There's a little strip of chrome trim that goes down and actually goes all the way around the car. This little tiny, you can just barely... Let me zoom in. There, you can just barely make it out. This little tiny line right here that goes all the way around the car is chrome. So that'll have to be chrome, and then I'll um, I'll also chrome the uh, or paint silver the backs of the tail lights uh, in here, and then do the emblems in silver. I got to mount the spoiler. The door handles are actually black. I don't remember what the door trims are. If these are black or if these are body color, but uh, whatever is black, I'll look at my reference photos and it'll get painted black. Um, even right down to these little windshield washer nubs. I don't know what color they are. They, they might be black, but, uh, but it's, uh, coming along pretty well. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the, uh, progress on it. It's looking good. One of the things that this kit does not come with is window masks. So the one piece glass, um, they, even the rear has the window defogger lines, which is kind of nice. Um, I'm going to have to do some black on here i'm gonna have to do some masking and some black around here and get that uh, get that squared away and then i can prepare the tail lights the turn signals the headlights get all that ready to go uh and this is moving right along so i'm going to finish up the undercarriage chassis 
going to mount the exhaust. I'm going to mount the gas tank. And then we have these little guys that go back here. Uh, I believe they, uh, they attach on like this. So those have to go on. These are going on next. Um, and then I'm ready for the uh, brake rotors that hold the poly cap. These are, um, this is a poly cap kit. So there's little, uh, little rubber. I don't know if they're rubber. They're, they're kind of rubbery in consistency, but, um, very, very popular with the, uh, Japanese kits. Um, these poly caps and, um, these little guys, actually one of them goes inside there. And then this glues on so that when you mount the wheels, the wheels have a little pin that pushes into the poly cap, securing it. And again, this is very popular with um, the Japanese kits. They all have poly caps. Um, but uh, progress is being made. We'll stop back shortly for an update. Okay, back for more. So I'm in the process of working on the wheels now. Um, the chassis and the interior is mounted. These, this is done. This is ready for wheels and tires and a car body on top of it. This is completed and looking very much the part. Um, I've got one wheel done already. I checked out the, whoop, and there it went. I checked out the uh, reference photos. The center logo is body color. There is no red on it, other than the silver trim around the edge, which I've already done with a uh, silver metallic Sharpie, uh, which I have here. I use that to go around the edges of the wheel. Uh, other than that, just the lug nuts are silver. So right now I am doing lug nuts and uh, I am just, you know, I am using the, uh, the new Revell Aqua Color, which I recently began using, silver. And, uh, and I'm really just taking a toothpick and uh, see if I can do this so that you can watch along. Yeah, and there it is. It took me all of two seconds to make a tiny mistake. But that's not really a big deal because I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and I'm gonna wet it a little bit and I'm gonna rub it on here. And it is all gone. And that is why I do it this way. Um, the paint color is a lacquer. The clear coat, uh, excuse me, the paint color is water-based but the clear coat is a urethane, a 2K clear. So it is not water-based. So by using a water-based paint for detailing, if I make any mistakes, I can just wipe it right off with no damage to the paint. If this was a water-based paint, a water-based clear coat, and I was using water-based paint, then there's no way to clean it. But because the clear coat is not water-based, but the silver is, if I make any mistakes, it just disappeared, just like I just did. Because it happens. I always get a little nervous on camera, too, when the camera is watching me. I have a little bit of a harder time working, which is why I don't do a lot of work on camera anymore. I used to do more work on camera. And I don't know, it just kind of... And it weirds me out sometimes. And there you go. So there are the lug nuts done silver. The trim is done silver. The centers are body color. Base coat, clear coat. And looking good. These are ready to have the tires mounted. I do really like these Revell Aqua Color paints. I know I mentioned that in the last video. Um, I continue to be impressed with uh, their usability, both in brushing toothpicking, airbrushing, this is good stuff. And no, they didn't give me this paint, I bought them. And I know I said I was gonna go back and uh, buy every color in the rainbow, and I was good to my word. I have a, a whole collection of these now, and they are, uh, they are working fabulously with, uh, with everything that I'm doing here. So the next step requires the body. So we're gonna have to let the clear coat cure for another day and then I will come in and I will do all of the trims on the body, the trims on the glass, 
the silver backing for the lights. I don't want to put masking tape on the clear coat yet um, until it has a chance to cure completely. And then we'll be going to final assembly very soon. Stay tuned for more. Okay, update on where we're at. I have the chassis, undercarriage, interior all mounted and glued together. You've seen the interior already. Wheels are looking good and poseable. Um, the uh, underside is looking fantastic in my humble opinion. I've got a lot of different uh, shades of metal here. I've gone in and done some detail as I mentioned already with the gold bolt heads. And I've brought in the, uh, the Tamiya black wash and uh, applied a wash to some of these components to highlight some of the texture, uh, the uh, lines in the uh, motor and engine and drivetrain. So she's looking good. The body, I have done the trims, the black trims around the windows, as well as the small chrome trim that goes all the way around the body. I have painted the areas where the taillights are going to go. And uh, so the body's ready. The only thing I have yet to do is I need to do the black door handles and the lock cylinders um, and these little emblems back here. And then that is good to go. I have prepared the lights, the front turn signals, the corner markers where the ambers are, and then the taillights, which have the uh, white and the amber and the red. So these are ready to go on the car. And then it's going to be done. So we should have a completed slideshow coming up very soon. Well, this will be the last update in the Hasegawa Mitsubishi Galant VR4 video series. The uh, car is done. Uh, this is a custom mix of the color as best I could get it. Um, custom license plates made for the, the vehicle owner. And um, this is a copy of a one-to-one, -one, as I've shown in an earlier video. Um, the steering is poseable. The underside looks pretty good with the different metal shades. Uh, love the Fuji, excuse me, the Hasegawa uh, wheels and tires. Always very nice, what Hasegawa does with wheels and tires. Um, I'm pleased with the, the outcome. It, uh, Quick build, curbside, low parts count, um, so there's no motor. Uh, the only thing that um, there is is like um, this piece that has the axle and the drive shaft on and has like a motor block, but underneath the hood is just a big empty hole. They actually did include an intercooler uh, there for the turbos, and you can't really see it through the grills, but, it, but it's there. The uh, headlights and taillights look good. Uh, the car looks uh, very much, very much like the like the one to one. They did a they did a good job on the kit. So we'll roll right into a slideshow. You can check out the car coming up soon. I've got another how to. I haven't done a how to video series in a while. Um, I just received a model kit from a model company that I'm going to use for that how to video series. So that's going to be coming up soon. I'm going to start filming that tonight. Uh, you should see that on the channel coming up shortly. So thanks again for tuning in, and uh, let's go to that slideshow.
very much for tuning in to Angelo's Workbench. That's going to finish up the Hasegawa Mitsubishi Gallant video series. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to set, uh, send me those below. Also, don't forget to hit that like or subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. I've got a new how-to series coming very soon.